Good morning, guys. So, as you saw by the title, uh, <laughs> this video is going to be kind of um, about a little bit of gardening stuff and some harvesting. Um, mainly, the uh, we have a pineapple that's ready, or our only pineapple. Um, and then uh, I also did some, uh, made some pickles, which I don't have video of that, but I have some uh, still images that I can insert. Um, and then just kind of go through and look at some of the other stuff that we have growing that we're working on. Um, I wanted to do a video that was a little bit different because I've been doing so many videos on building the shed. So I feel, felt like I needed to break it up a little bit with something else. Um, so that's what this video is going to be about. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. All right, so this is our pineapple. And you know that a pineapple is ready to harvest when it gets the yellow or orange color all the way up to the top. So what I've been told is that's the sugar, uh, I guess the sugar level of the fruit. And as the sugar rises, the color changes, and then that's how you know the fruit is ripe. So what we're gonna do, and like right now I can just smell this pineapple just standing this far away from it. Um, so I'm going to harvest this pineapple off, and then we have some little cakey tubes, which are these little sprouts on the bottom. So a pineapple plant produces one fruit and then it's done. It's similar to bananas. Bananas are the same way. They'll produce one rack of bananas and then you basically cut down the tree and then a new one grows. What's Hati doing over there? <laughs> so once I pull this pineapple off, then this plant is done. The plant itself doesn't die. It just won't produce fruit anymore. And it takes one year to two years, up to two years, for it to produce a pineapple, which is crazy. If you think about how many pineapples are out there, I mean, this is one of the main exports in Hawaii. So they must have these on a rotation in, you know, huge, huge farms, like just to keep up for the demand of that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna harvest this. We're going to prepare the top because if you plant the top, that will grow into a new plant, as well as these little tubers on the side, they'll grow into a new plant. So another thing that happened, uh, my wife and I relocated the coffee seedlings. So they were right here. You can see kind of where there's, I had them sort of on a right, right angle here with the two tables. Um, so the table that was right here actually collapsed. And when I made these tables, I guess I didn't realize like how much weight that was. So it's a lot of weight. There's 240 seedlings in each one of these tables. Um, so basically what had happened was, is it slowly started to tilt and then the legs just folded. Um, so we removed all the coffee seedlings and I put it all back together and then I add these, added these reinforcement legs on both sides. So, uh, and I did it to both tables obviously and then we moved them over to this location. So you can see the um, the coffee seedlings are doing great. Um, they all look really good. Some of them are kind of um, starting to... So when they're starting to get the bark like this, that means that they're, um, they're becoming stronger and more like trees. And uh, a lot of them have that already. So I'm hoping in the next few months that we'll actually get the other get going on the other land but we'll see um i know i had done a video before saying we were going to postpone this for a year but i don't really want to wait that long because these things need to be put into the ground because as they get bigger and bigger i'm going to need more and more space and i don't really want to keep spending money building tables and you know spots for this so we'll see what happens I'm working with the uh, USDA Farm Service Agency to try and get some financing to get the uh, start getting the development going on the land. But yeah, these things are looking awesome. So this is kind of our little, all we have really for our garden patch so far. <clears throat> we do plan on 
eventually creating a space and doing some raised beds <clears throat> and then also a greenhouse eventually. Um, but we have a lot of different stuff in here. Uh, this is pigeon pea. So these, both of these here are pigeon pea. Um, this is lettuce and you can see something's eating it. Another lettuce. Um, I don't know what all these are actually. This is cilantro. I know that. This one is parsley. This is sage, which is this one here. This is uh, basil. Um, this is Brussels sprouts. This one is just a flower that my wife likes. So she's, she picked one off of uh, one that was on the road when we were walking the dogs and she propagated it. Now it's grown into a whole bush. Uh, this is Brussels sprouts. This is green pepper. And you can see you got some little peppers there. Um, this one has some pretty large peppers on it. So this is probably actually ready to harvest there just about. This one you can see has a lot of peppers on it. So the way that these grow, which is kind of cool, is if you see the flower, so the flower is actually what becomes the pepper. So the flower's there and then the petals fall off and it looks something like this little one up here. You see the little string sticking out. And then if you look inside there, that's the pepper starting to grow. And then as it goes through, let's see if I can find another one. I don't really see, well, I guess there's a smaller one there, but basically that's how the pepper grows. It starts with the flower, I guess on this one you can see. So there's the pepper after the petals all fall off and then the uh, peppers growing. So we have quite a few green peppers. And then this is some more Brussels sprouts, which my wife and I both love Brussels sprouts. Um, and then the Brussels sprouts actually form on the stalk here. So you can see that's where they actually, they'll get little pods, which are the actual Brussels sprout. So that's where those grow. And then over here, this is a um, Thai basil, which has just gotten huge. Um, <clears throat> so we got this from one of our friends. Um, their channel is uh, Big Island Lava Pioneers. So they gave us this uh, Thai basil, just a tiny little clipping uh, when we were over there one time and now it's grown into a full bush. There's the shed. So we're going to be building a, um, there's going to be a planter box here and I believe we're going to put the pigeon pea in there. So the pigeon pea will eventually bush up and it actually uh, has like a nice flower on it and everything too once it goes up. And the pigeon pea, once it grows, it just keeps producing. So as it grows up, you just you hedge down the top and then it'll just keep bushing and growing and you know, it, it doesn't die after it, um, I guess, produces. It just keeps going and gets, you know, stronger and healthier. Um, right here, we're gonna do kind of a vertical uh, gardening wall. And we're gonna do that more for uh, herbs. So, and maybe flowers and some other stuff. <clears throat> Something like that. We're still kind of figuring out what we're gonna do there. All right, so back to the pineapple. Um, when you're ready to harvest your pineapple, um, I've seen guys where they'll just twist the pineapple right off or you can just cut it, you know, down here, about right there, basically right at the bottom and then you can cut this off once you get it off the plant. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and then we'll take it over to the table where I have the cutting board. It's kind of hard to, <laughs> I'll see if I can film this and cut it at the same time, I don't know. If I'll be able to or not. There we go. Okay. All right. So you can see the two little cakeys down here. And basically, what I'm going to do is just break those off. <clears throat> Now, if you look on these, you can actually, hopefully this will focus. You can actually see there's the, um, the root bulb inside here. 
I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, but you'll see it on the top too. That'll be easier to see because it's bigger. So you want to clean off all of the excess little leaves that are long here. Same with the bottom of the pineapple. You can just cut that off. Top of the pineapple, same thing. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside just for a second. So this is the main part that you wanna replant. And what you need to do is you have to cut all the fruit off of here. So you could just take this and you could put it on the ground or in a pot and it could grow. But if you leave fruit on here, the fruit eventually is going to rot from being in the soil and that could kill the plant or inhibit it from growing. So what you want to do is you want to trim this back. And I'll actually end up trimming this a little bit more. And then this bottom section of leaves you want to actually pull off. Maybe the bottom inch to two inches of leaves. And what you want to do is you want to expose this base in here. So I'm going to trim this even closer. All right. So you want to make sure to get all of the fruit off of there. Oh, I almost tripped. <laughs> okay, so if you look on here, you can see the, the root base here. And I'm actually going to trim this bottom part off here too, so it's just the root base. So from this point, basically what you're going to do is just like you would with a potato um, or other starts where I'll put toothpicks in here and then I'll put this into a jar with water or a bowl with water. And then once you get roots, then you can plant it into a pot or into the ground. And it's going to be the same with the top as, as well as the keikis. So these will get suspended in water and then wait for roots. So from the one pineapple, I can now have three pineapples. And the number of keikis that you get can vary. You might get one, you might get two, you might get three. It just depends on how the plant's growing. So from this one pineapple, I could get three more. And then go ahead and just cut this up the rest of the way. Man, it smells so awesome too. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it in long pieces. We'll throw these in the fridge for later. Yeah, it smells so good. <laughs> All right, and then all this you can just throw into a compost pile if you have a compost pile and then it'll become mulch and be able to be reused. All right, so I didn't have any toothpicks, so I used dental flossers. <laughs> 
So basically that's all you do. And if you have a windowsill that has good sunlight, set them there and then just wait till they start to root and then you could plant them in the ground or in a pot. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about was I started a agricultural program with Go Farm Hawaii and they are a company that works with the University of Hawaii and basically they teach agriculture. Um, it's everything from start to finish. Uh, initially I did a five-week course which was called Ag Exposure and it talks a little bit about farming in Hawaii, um, different you know kind of broad topics and then you go to the farm for one day um, it's basically like a Zoom class because of the, the uh, COVID coronavirus stuff. Um, we had a Zoom class on Tuesday nights and then um, we had one Saturday during that ag exposure where we went to the farm. And uh, basically this is a brand new farm on the Big Island. So Go Farm is on uh, five, I think, of the islands. They're on Oahu, of course, Maui, uh, Kauai, Molokai and then Big Island now um, and the course that I have now started is the Ag Excel and it is a six-month course and it's pretty intensive as far as uh, what it teaches you. Um, it teaches you teaches about different soils, about uh, composting, about setting up nurseries, uh, planting. Um, it teaches you about the business side of farming which is really important. Um, you know, how to do CSAs, which is community supported agriculture, um, which has become really big in, in the Big Island or on the Big Island because of, um, you know, the coronavirus uh, thing. And um, so there's a lot of these small farms that are really kind of stepping up and they're basically doing CSA boxes every week full of vegetables. Some farms do meat. Um, so and those will be like on a monthly basis. Um, but part of the course that I'm taking is also we have to do a CSA box. So um, we go every Saturday to the farm. And if you've seen um, my Instagram page, which is DHV Farms, uh, which there's always a link below, you know, in the description of my videos, um, that's where I post uh, pictures and videos from the farm. Um, so the pickles that I made, the cucumbers came, I harvested from the farm, which is what we grew or what has been growing. Um, and like I said, this farm is basically just being set up. So uh, it's, it's only been started, uh, I wanna say in the last six months. Um, they basically found the land and they're leasing it and they're doing, you know, there's a lot that had to be done as far as, um, layout and set up for the farm and the different field areas and putting in you know berms to direct rain flow and um, a lot of other plantings and stuff so if you want to see more stuff about that you can follow my instagram page which is dhv farms and that's where i'll be posting that kind of stuff but i just wanted to explain a little bit about what that program is and i'll put a link to go farm in the description below as well so if you're interested in it you can look at it um, it's of course it's only in Hawaii but I'm sure they have similar programs in the mainland that you can do I mean if you're really interested in getting into agriculture um, which is something you know one of the things that I'm going to be doing and obviously with my coffee back here you know farming can be a lot of different things it's not like you're growing corn in the middle of Iowa <laughs> which is where I'm from originally um, but there's a lot of different ways to do farming. You could do livestock, you can do coconut trees, you can do papayas, you can do corn, you could do um, tomatoes. I mean, there's so many different varieties of things that you can do. You can do microgreens, you can do a greenhouse, you can do raised, like there's just so many different things to do. And it's something that's really important nowadays. I think there's a big awakening happening around the world right now because of what's going on. And for you to be sustainable and to be able to provide food for yourself and your family. And then if you can provide food for your community on top of that, it's even you know better. And that's where I'm trying to get to. I want to get to the point where um, 
you know, I'm not going to the grocery store every week. I don't want to be going there buying food when I don't have to. And this is by no means going to be a quick process. It's going to take me years to get, you know, set up to where I'm walking out to the vegetable garden or to the greenhouse or I have livestock and we, you know, process chickens or pigs or what, you know, whatever it may be down the road. But it's something that's pretty important. And I think everyone, it doesn't matter how much space you have, really, you could put a small raised box on a patio and still grow some vegetables. I mean, you see the little space that we have back here of uh, what vegetables we're growing. And I know that's a really small amount, but the amount of peppers and Brussels sprouts and herbs that we're growing on there that we'll get, that's more than enough for my wife and I, which is what we, you know, what we have here right now. And that is maybe a four foot by four foot area where those, what those two tables are. So it doesn't take a lot of space. You know, you can set it up pretty easy. So I'm going to do a, a cut scene real quick of the cucumbers that I got and that um, I processed and made into pickles. And these are Costa cucumbers, kind of like um, Costa Rica. Uh, I don't think that's where they originated. That's just the name of them. And they're a very large, you'll see from the pictures, uh, big cucumber. Um, so here's that clip. All right, so these are just some still shots of when I was creating uh, or making pickles. <laughs> uh, these cucumbers, as I mentioned, came from the farm that I'm working on uh, with the Go Farm Hawaii program. And basically just the process of cutting them up, adding dill, peppercorn, salt, a little sugar, garlic, uh, apple cider vinegar, and then of course the cucumbers to the pot. I also added a little bit of Tabasco sauce. Uh, one of the classmates used a uh, Hawaiian chili pepper in hers and it was really good. So here's one of the jars. And these don't have to be, um, as far as normal canning, you're not putting these into a boiling pot to seal the lids or anything like that. Um, they don't have to sit for months to ferment. Um, basically they sit in the fridge for a couple of days and they're ready to eat. Of course, the longer they sit, the more flavorful they're going to get. Um, but they would still last quite a long time, just like this. So you can see the dill, the peppercorn, the cucumbers, of course. There's a big garlic clove right there. Um, they're just really good and flavorful. And even though those cucumbers are really large, I mean, you see how big these slices are. Um, they're still very crispy, and they taste just like you know regular smaller cucumbers they're just really big really nice though all right guys so that's going to wrap up this video uh, i just wanted to show some of the uh other stuff that like i work on here um plants and growing stuff and vegetables and <laughs> um, something a little bit different than building but it's all part of the process all part of you know the dream that we're trying to build here of uh, being self-sustaining and growing our own food and, you know, working on our own land. It's just all part of it, part of the whole package. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video. Aloha.